Morgan. Yeah. What happens with maps. That's, that's, time that's time. how it works. Yeah, it is how it works. That is how it works. It's not exactly the same as uh, Lat America last season. The beginning of Lat America previous season, it was border for every match. In the every single play. one, all four. And then we had the border. same thing at the last day, too, didn't we? The very last day of Lat America, I think, it was all border, wasn't it? I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it was. All right, so here's the vote. 87%. That's uh, slightly more in favor of FaZe than the previous vote was in favor of Ninja Pajamas. These are not even close. Yeah. <laughs> these are just, these are blowouts. The, like, uh, uh, no. You get an 80%, and you get an 80%, and you get an 80%, <laughs> but, and so far, you've been right. I was talking about this earlier, and it was, it, 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 this is true. I mean, the the, re the reaches are closer in terms of skill gap than they used to be. Again, like a season ago, two seasons ago, you used to be able to say definitively, hey, a team is just going to win. But now these matches are coming to the last round every single, ma every single match. There's been one blowout in Latin America, and every other matchup has been a 7-5. Like, for goodness sakes, people, stop giving 80% to these teams. But technically, they've been correct. They said 80-some-odd percent or 78%, I think it was, for Team Liquid. They were right. They said 80%-some-odd for Ninjas in Pajamas. They were right. They're going to give it to FaZe Clan, and we'll see if they can phase up. This was the team that won BR6. This was the team that finished second in Rio, going up against Payne Gaming, who had to compete in relegations last season. Mm -hmm. it looked like they lost one of their best players. Bounced back. They had a great start in their matchup. You know, they, they beat Int 7-5, but, like you said, not a great start for Int. They're at 0-2 right now. How much of that is Int being uh, maybe not the greatest team? How much of that was Payne being a good team? How much of that was in the matchup we just saw? How much of that was Nip conceding the lead for a short period of time? These questions, frustratingly, can't be answered for most people because I know people want these answers ASAP. Who's the best team, Parker? Hey, Parker, who's going to win at the Invitational? You know what my favorite question is? What's that? What's your all-star team? <laughs> it's a favorite question, hands down. I um, Mine would be... Stop. See, I whenever stop it right. Whenever now. somebody cares, whenever somebody asks me that, I answer honestly, and it's that I've only played with so many players before, and the only one that like I would definitely want to be on a team with again is Slash from Slash Ug from North America. But it's the Tune Squad, but because Michael Jordan, that's but, the All Star team. He's they like beat the, the Monster. He's like the ultimate chill player. Like, and the, here's the thing though. I can only pick from the players that I've played with, you know? Like, I don't, I haven't played with the entire world, so I don't know who my all-star team is. The Edmonton Oilers in the 1980s. Right, those guys. That would be, uh, who are the, those? The Toon Squad with I, Michael I don't Jordan. Know who those people are. And Bill Murray on the team. Obviously, those are your all-star team. You can call me uncultured, but I don't know who those people are. You haven't seen Space Jam? Nope. He also hates me because I haven't seen The Office. How have you not seen The Office? Just watch it. Yeah. Just watch it. It's I don't know. I mean, it's... It's funny, but it's not like, I mean, it's not really, I'm, Brooklyn Nine-Nine was funny. Have you watched Brooklyn Nine-Nine? I have. Yeah, I kind of got, got burnt out in around like season three, but it was funny for you a You could while. burn out of a show after like 50 episodes. I, they just kind of repeat the same formula. And I think that's one of the reasons why I'm not huge on The Office. I think that's just called being a TV show. Yeah, but I like TV shows with progression. You know, like the the some kind of character development. There's something really actual, tangible, actually tangible, not just like, oh hey, he changed his outfit. Oh my god. The show What Not to Wear would not be for you then in that what, case. Is that a real show? Yeah, it's a show where they tell you what not to wear. Really? Like yeah, you're you're yanking not, my chain. That's no, not that's a, a real show. Okay. I or, say, or, I or, or don't say, don't watch Say Yes to the Dress either. You I hate that. I did not. Because that's literally just people changing outfits. There's no character progression. I didn't grow up with a TV. I, I never had a TV. So I, I watch all these things online. And usually, like, when that happens, you just, like, select what you want to watch instead of all these shows that you can watch. Think about everything that's out there, and you've never selected to watch the movie Space Jam. I don't know what that is. Unbelievable. I feel, you know, I, feel, I do feel like I'm letting you down right now but I, I can't help it. So uh, we're just waiting on everything to get ready. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, as soon as we have pain and phase. Ready yeah. to play, then we'll go into the, we'll go into the game. Now, yeah. the way that we saw Bank get played out, there was 12 rounds played, nine defensive round victories last time, three attacking round victories, okay? Mm -hmm. Obviously, quite defender-sided. A lot of that does, I think, play into the fact that Hibana was banned. Whether these teams were caught flat-footed by that ban, I'm not entirely certain. Now, this was Nip's ban, so obviously they knew 
that they were going to be playing without a Hibana. When they were attacking, yet they only managed to get two attacking round victories. So clearly, they knew there would be some handicap there from losing the Hard Breacher. Now, I'd imagine that if we see a Hibana get banned on bank this time around, it will be a similar defensive struggle between these teams. And why Hibana gets banned over Thermite is because, you know, you got to get the hatches and that you get three hatches versus with Thermite you only get two. And then teams weren't really using Maverick on the, on the hatches the same way and mostly just a fragging operator. But the real question here is going to be, if you don't have a Hibana, what were the main stumbling blocks that you saw out of the matchup that just played out on bank that neither FaZe nor Pain can basically copy. How are they going to break apart from their colleagues in Latin America to prove that the attackers can actually win rounds? Well, all of the attacks going on to the basement were kind of just all over the place. There was no, like, what are they... What, no one knew what they were trying to do uh, no, or trying to accomplish when they were attacking the basement. Usually what you'd see is a server attack. Uh, we're going to get into the match, but I'm going to keep talking about this. Bank is ready. We're loading in. It's ready. And we'll get everything started up. But yeah, uh... Nobody, no, I don't think we actually saw any attacks from the server. Uh, I'm not 100% sure about this, but I don't recall seeing any attacks dedicated to the server like you normally would see a Thermite that, you know, through the wall and a, and a standard default plant. We, I know we didn't see any default plants, that's for sure. And I feel like just, you know, running some basic strategies, if you don't, you know, might be the solution. Habana being banned out here, not exactly surprising. Um, in fact, pretty commonplace, so that's going to be Phase's ban. Payne going to get rid of Montaigne, and uh, if they watch the previous match, I think that's probably why they're doing that. Makes a lot of sense. Montaigne was a very powerful force for the attacking team in the match we just watched, and getting rid of him, period, was going to be a good thing, no matter who you're up against. Uh, Valkyrie as uh, the first defender. The Monty ban also directly plays into Yuna. Yuna plays Montaigne a lot, an awful, awful lot, and has FaZe usually play a Finca around it as well. Now, we did see a bit of Finca on the border matchup to start the day off in Black Dragons versus Team Liquid. You really see quite so much of it for Ince and Nip, but I would imagine that we will probably see her trotted out a couple times when FaZe goes to attack in round number seven. In the meantime, we're going to see what Payton is going to be able to do, and of course, by banning the Monty, Pain, not exactly using that shield, as effectively as we will see from FaZe. As you mentioned, rounding it out will be a Valkyrie and an Echo as the other two bands. And Valkyrie, quite a staple operator of FaZe as well. One of Mav's most played operators and an operator who also just fits bank exceptionally well. It's a huge map, one of the biggest in the entire game. You can stick a Valkyrie camera basically anywhere. And unless you run an IQ, it's very difficult to find them. We got to see a lot of glimpses in the Ints and Nip game just a few minutes ago of Valkyries who Attackers can stick their Valkyrie cameras in positions where you'd have no idea that you were under constant watch from the defenders. With that said, faces versus defense will go upstairs to CEO. An interesting place to start, but it does tend to stick with the pattern that a lot of teams have been using CEO much more often than in the past. And yet Teller's still, I think, statistically the best side. If we're talking about win rate, I don't, again, have the stats exactly right in front of me, but I'm pretty sure. Now, FaZe bringing themselves upstairs, as you said, a little bit different, but uh, still perfectly viable. Reinforcing all these windows here on the banana is going to make sure that you have plenty of room to rotate. Don't even need to get all of them, according to Yuna. He's just going to get a couple. Fair. Don't have to uh, spend too much time getting those windows. Revolt's bringing the glass. Going to be super useful in all likelihood on this site, especially playing the long angle from Garage. And this repel here from FK1 is going to be also very valuable as he can cut off a lot of rotation by that banana on an off angle that it's possible FaZe will not be expecting, however unlikely. Interesting to note, just taking a second to, to point out these bans here. If you go all the way back to Rio, FaZe Clan bans Hibana on almost every single map they play, and Echo inhabits the role of their second most banned operator. So for FaZe, it's a bit routine when it comes to these sorts of things, which is a good thing. I mean, it lets FaZe basically control what operators they do and don't use, and oh man, you hit that shot once in a lifetime. GCR on Repel, and that's Cameraman all the way from downtown with the Vector. It's a beautiful shot, and not often that you will see somebody be able to make that without an ACOG handy. So that'll start things off for Phaser. But just touching very uh, very quickly 
on the on the bands. FaZe often telegraph their bands. They ban the two Japanese operators almost every single matchup. But what that also does is it allows your opponents to ban whatever they want because they don't have to really worry. They know you're going to ban one of those two operators most of the time. You have to work around that. But we've seen it proven in the past that you can get away with it. I mean, look at G2. One of the most telegraphed bands for quite a long time in that lion, and it, it was so consistent, but it didn't matter. And you could make the argument, yeah, but that's G2. At the same time, they, they did, you know, it's a thing that they did, and it worked. It means it could work for anyone if you play it right. Now, Revolt's going to be pushing his way towards the main hall. I think he still has one smoke in hand, and that's going to be really important when he makes that push to meeting hall. You can see it's a much slower round being played out here than what we were seeing in the previous couple matches. Both of these teams really not willing to let go of the potential momentum. Well, GCR being eliminated early is going to hurt the uh, actual site attack here for the, atta uh, well, the attacking team. But at the same time, they can easily recover. And there's the start of said recovery as FK1 manages to take down Moringa. A possible pinch here as well from the glasses. Revolts amidst the cover of smoke. We'll start to walk right in. Mav with his best Canadian uh, homage, running an evil genius's the skin on the UMP, the and of course a banana as a nod to Canadian, the captain of the team. He'll take one down with Yuna getting a finish on the Gabrilos. Yuna getting another as FK had taken one down, and as the glass hops on towards the conference table to get everybody's attention. Might not have wanted it as it's cameraman who will pop right up and he'll end the meeting being called by the Russian sniper inside of the conference room. And that'll be FaZe taking it as we continue to see the defense run up the score here on bank today. That was nice. What was nice? The little ward play there. It was like a, it was like a three-pronged one. I like that. I try my best. Yeah, well done. Thank you, Michael. So, in that round, um, I think Payne got a little bit distracted. They had a clear-cut idea of what they were trying to do, um, but maybe a little too hesitant in their attempt. And also, again, people going off and engaging on their own angles, their own fights one at a time. That was a big problem. I mean, okay, for for example, Revolts, the last one alive in that round, he made a pretty a pretty nice push. I like what he did into meeting hall. Establish control. Really important. But there was nobody to support him from his flank over by Banana or at the entrance to reception. You could say, it, it was of course, because everyone was dead at that point. But even on the initial point, uh, initial push rather, there was nobody helping him push into meeting. And FaZe played it perfectly. Uh, Yuna fell off of meeting and uh, actually pushed into the storage closet. But at the same time, it just was a clear lack of coordination on Payne's side. Um, and it's something that I think they're gonna definitely need to work on moving forward in this match. The, the confusing thing is, it was a lack of coordination, but not because they didn't want the coordination. They clearly were strategizing for it to, to you know, be easy to pull off. Attackers they just somehow failed regardless. Uh, setting themselves up correctly, just not timing it all right. Uh, again, uh, you could lay that at the feet of FaZe getting pick after pick after pick. As is a staple, as always, that glass is going to be so important on attacking Bank. But due to the unpredictability of where FaZe plays, the glass I think, is just going to get brought out. Not that we don't see quite a lot of glass played by Pain Gaming hmm. in the hands of Revolts. I mean, it's a pretty common operator. You saw it as well. Glass would be played quite a bit on FaZe Clan side of things with Psycho, if I remember correctly. But it's actually been quite a while since Nip has run it. As a stun grenade gets wasted or rather used to burn half of an ADS. Where Astro is going to play on server stairs is the Maverick from above. We'll try to determine if somebody is playing up there. The sound that he hears of the ADS going off will alert him that there is very likely a body playing at the top of server stairs will need to be dealt with at some point. Common place for teams to have someone there, but usually the operator will be running a shotgun so that you can engage at close range. You've seen Ella played there with the shotgun. You've seen the Jaeger played there with the shotgun and mute and even a smoke as Payne does their best job of droning out and setting up drones to save later. This is good drone economy, parking their drones in positions where they can cover possible flanks or catch members of FaZe on a rotate as Payne goes for their execute. But this will rely on Payne keeping a numbers advantage in hopes of being able to catch those members of FaZe as they rotate. Again, a very slow attack from Payne. Uh, 
a little bit more justified attacking onto the basement slowly than uh, CEO. At the same time, they need a little bit more initiative on their side here. Uh, we're coming down to the last minute. All smoke still in hand for the defenders. Evil Eye still in play. Two C4s. I mean, this this is looking pretty unwinnable right now for uh, the attacking team. Faze are in a great position to just lock this out. They've got Mav on the heartbeat detector calling out. He's still got his C4. They've got the C4 prepped from Yuna, ready to go. This isn't, they're not even gonna need to worry about a fake. This is as meta as it comes on bank here. First C4 gonna go on, it's gonna catch its intended target on the GCR. And now you'll tag out Yuna. And then comes Mav with the other Nitro Cell. A flash goes off and Moringa is there with one Toxic Cancer to possibly go down. Revolt is gonna need to do some good work here with that DMR of his. But Gabrielos goes down, so you've taken out another planter. Diffuser is down and will need to be fetched as a second Nitro Cell from FaZe will work out quite well. Revolts is watching. Astro coming in, takes out FK, and Revolts is there to take out Mav. But Astro, controller disconnected as he's just sitting and will have to go get some batteries from the uh, family cupboard. He gets destroyed by the skeleton key, and Cameraman pops up to eliminate spawns as it's FaZe Clan taking yet another round. It's two in a row, and the defense continues to do their things as we anticipate with a hard breacher ban here on bank. So in the last match, we saw exactly zero meta plays like that from either team. Yes. Uh, it was completely off meta. They were just playing a very aggressive, very different. Uh, and it worked out for neither uh, neither team on attack. Here, we see Pain Gaming playing very heavy meta, as you said, but playing it poorly. And against a team like FaZe, who understands the meta better than most. So. Really well done to FaZe to lock that out. It was ex extremely clean. I think clean is the way I would describe that round for them. Uh, everything was timed perfectly. Uh, the C4s, the gas canisters, the flank from the Jaeger on the main stairs. Pain Gaming, on the other hand, last minute Defense before they even start pushing server. I always, uh, the word that I typically default to and rely upon using, almost like a crutch, is it's rhythmic. You open up the wall, you go into plant, you try to bait out a toxic Systematic. Monster. Systematic is good. I think I think Rhythmic does apply really well because there is a rhythm to it. You yep. go in, you try to bait out a toxic canister, you can possibly toss in a smoke. You want to burn any errant ADSs that might be around with your flashes. Mm -hmm. You're going to have the Thermite go back in, bait out another toxic canister, C4 might come out, try to avoid that. Maybe you have a Monte, et etc. et cetera, et cetera. We don't need to necessarily go through it in absentia because we see it happen quite regularly. Yeah. But basically, it, it always tends to happen the same way. And that's... And that's totally okay. It's those little micro adjustments that teams make. Maybe Glaz looks from a certain angle. Maybe you hold off on your smoke. Maybe you are able to bait out a C4. Maybe you have one person late flank through garage. Maybe you have a drone set up to catch somebody playing inside a vault. Maybe you drop through the vault hatch itself and try to catch them from behind. Right, you're, just, you're describing top tier siege play. Oh my god, I am. <laughs> Michael. You guys should see his face right like, now. I, it's a, I am aghast. But no, <laughs> basically the point that I'm trying to make is that there are tiny micro adjustments that teams make mid to late round right. that make all the difference And that mm -hmm. even though something does tend to play out very same. We said it was very meta, Pulse playing inside of gold. You've got a mirror window there. There's gonna be a smoke playing. You got C4s in hand. That's so common, but you gotta make tiny little things as an attacker that differ because the defense is gonna win if you don't. Yeah. Even really in that case, the defense still won. So I mean, hey, you need to. It's a really good way to put it. I, I do think that the pain were trying to commit to that uh, the standard meta though, and it worked heavily against them because I don't think they're nearly as practiced in it as FaZe. And there's something to be said about breaking away from the meta instead of trying to come up with your own little intricacies to the attack. Um, what we saw from in, in the previous match was just that. They were both, both teams, Ince and Nip, were trying to break away and do their own thing. Uh, and it might benefit Pain in this situation to do just that. Uh, it might not. It might be to their detriment. It might be even worse. But that last round, pretty substantially in FaZe's favor. Yeah. Both teams are playing meta. C4 actually caught mid-air there by uh, FK1. Excellent shot there. He's also able to get Cameraman. Revolt's his teammate will eliminate Astro as well. So, uh, FaZe, first time ever looking to lose a round. You almost just said a bad word when you said FK1's name. <laughs> oh, no, actually, I, the reason I stumbled. No, no, the reason I stumbled is I was, I was going to say FaZe. Oh, okay. So I was like, I was like, oh, it's, <laughs> no, no, that's, I mean, a, that's another F word there, you know. So <laughs> it's, let's, it's it's so, tough. It is tough. No, when you're in the, the thick of things. Yeah. Okay. 
sure thing there. Sure thing, thing, but I'm on you. Flashes from above. You gonna take it? I'll take it. 50 seconds left. Flashes from above as Yuta's gonna watch through all these holes that have been opened up in Archives Towers to try and give the defense a fighting chance. And it's gonna be Moringa trained with the shotgun, but not quick enough. He's very low on HP, so wisely he has to turn tail and run. Both he and the Mira playing on site. That's Yuna. Gonna have to just try and bide time. Mav creeping on up. He's full HP and could possibly be the linchpin of this defense now as he's got an opening from open area in through the side office. He's now gonna look all the way towards elevators. Yuna's gonna get down from the wall, getting blown open, and FK1 waltzes right in. Moringa and Mav picking up two of their own to try and close that gap. Pain will need to rotate with revolts, heading towards the main lobby. Oh. Mav takes out spawns. There's no time! And they need to grab the diffuser, but they only have two seconds, oh. and Moringa pops up and knocks them down with the SMG-11. Celebrating the festive season with the icing sugar all over the casing of the gun. And that's as sweet a kill as you are going to get to end that round. And FaZe will take it. And for the third time in a row, we see the defense go up 3 0 to start off a match for the day. Jeez. That is absolutely brutal there from FaZe, a round that without question should have been pains. The diffuser being down though in the main lobby in so little time on the clock is going to negate your advantage in every way. I think the true fault there for pain, the reason they didn't win it, is the same reason they've been struggling in the previous two rounds. Absolutely abhorrent time management. Seriously, I mean, I don't know what's going on with Pain right now, but their attacks have been molasses slow. And it's something they're definitely going to need to improve upon starting now. If they want to have any hope of scraping away a couple rounds in this map. Uh, another thing to touch on when it comes to time management, we're, we're, we're dealing with Bank right now. This is one of the bigger maps in Siege. Uh, and you really do need to pace yourself properly if you want to have a hope in winning attacking rounds. It's very important. Uh, Payne's attacks have been the most timid we've seen all today. Doesn't matter the map or the team. Go. Something there again, they're gonna need to fix. But overall, great clutch Five there from Moringa, and uh, really gonna hand it to Phase winning that one out. I was Mav on the Mav on the pulse, right by open area. Correct. So Moringa and Mav, good job. And that was a uh, that was just. Uh, <laughs> Payne, who had set up their drones in the previous round downstairs, and they looked like they had really good coverage, did not have it whatsoever for that round. Yeah. They did not know where the flank was coming from from Mav. They didn't know that Moringa had rotated into lobby, which we had seen. Both he and Yuna basically evacuated the site after they lost control of CEO above because they knew they were going to be picked apart from the various attackers who had complete control above. And with the soft destruction that had been done originally to enable FaZe to defend better, it ended up working against them when they lost that map control, which is essentially how things work out at a very, uh, at a very macro level in Rainbow Six. So, when you look at the CEO defense back upstairs, a perfect start to this game for FaZe Clan. Is, it doesn't even look like Spawns is being droned in. He's just gonna walk all the way over towards Skylight Stairwell. He knows that there's a rotate in towards open area. All the while, he's going to have one member of the team not too far off. Make that two. Revolts and FK1 up the spiral stairs, watching the double doors in towards Banana. I mean, that there's that yellow fluorescent color. Revolts will see one body up in that Banana doorway, also known as an office up top. It's going to be FK1 who's just going to peel back in the glass. Of revolts will move just to try to get additional coverage, but Mav starts things off by taking out the buck of spawns, who we'd mentioned earlier was just entering solo downstairs. The smoke really amazingly poorly placed, actually above the doorway, landing on just a little bit of a lip there, and uh, because of that, Yuna's going to be able to take down revolts. FK will refrag, so that's a very important refrag. But at the same time, the glass gone is going to be a detrimental hit to the attack. Phase in a great position now, and. Uh, they're just waiting for the rest of the attackers to push their way in. And again, Pain are taking this awfully slow. Going to be rotating GCR to those north windows. He could potentially do some serious damage there, especially as Ash, great operator to go on repel and uh, move around, try to get those kills. 
I mean, you've got a Glass, you've got an Ash, and you've got a Zofia. You've got to be faster. And I mean, as you said, GCR on these windows can deal quite a bit of damage. The Ash might be a little bit slow, but at least takes out Moringa in this capacity. There's going to be a run out from Mav, who had overhealed himself, so it was obviously deliberate and can be a very good distraction. Here's you say goodbye to GCR. On the flank is Astro. There's some pings going down as cameraman takes out FK1, and Gabrielos on top of the banana. The Just on the gone. outside. Well, he's gone. He'll drop the diffuser, and FaZe will take their fourth in a row, as that's a great flank from Astro, enabled quite heavily by the marks onto both remaining defenders and good coordination from FaZe there. We'll give them CEO for the second time and still keep pain off of the board. I'm still hesitant to call this a FaZe match. Uh, I, just as much as I'm hesitant to say that uh, Bank is being defender-sided today. It clearly is today defender-sided. But as you stated earlier, statistically, this is supposed to be one of the maps that is the most well-balanced in Siege. So I, I understand why it, you know, you know, it would look like it's defender-sided, but it, it, it's not necessarily the map itself as much as it is the teams playing it right this minute. Uh, just... In the same uh, in the sorry, in the previous match, it was the same sort of deal. Um, both teams really struggling to uh, win attacks. To and and thus far, I will say that Face seems to have a substantial leg up. Not necessarily dealing with a uh, defender-sided sort of deal right now. In, in from the what from my perspective, uh, I'm honestly seeing pain really struggling with their pacing, struggling with winning gunfights, struggling with their teamwork, struggling with a lot of things right this minute. That could come down to them and their map preference. Maybe they aren't really happy playing bank, but uh, whatever it is, FaZe are, are definitely just winning right now off of their merits and uh, not so much the map. This looks more like the phase that we had seen last season after Yuna stepped in. If you recall, the team didn't drop a single matchup after Yuna came in until the loss to G2 in Rio. That includes BR6. So it was quite a uh, it was quite a triumphant, uh, I guess, debut for Yuna onto the team and seemed to be the missing part of uh, of what the team was looking for. So. Since then, FaZe only had a few minor stumbles. They had it in the previous matchup, but they look to be back on track here. And this also looks to be a bit more of the pain that we have uh, come to, to know as of last season, the one that struggled to really make their way up the scoreboard and yeah. ultimately ended up beating, beating Guidance for that final spot to come back into Pro League in relegation. So we'll see what FaZe can put together as they go back downstairs to CCTV and Payne will need to hasten their advance. It's something that you touched on last round. I think it's really, really clear, but... I've touched on it every round. The problem with CCTV is this doesn't tend to be a site that plays out quickly. You usually are getting that diffuser off in the dying seconds because of all that utility that you need to basically bleed dry from the yeah. defense. No, it's a, you're absolutely right. The, the, big, the big problem here is, is what you're talking about, and it was the same thing we saw the last time that uh, Payne attacked the bottom floor. Because FaZe are playing pure meta, as we discussed. They've got all of the kit they could need within the bands to defend this basement if we're talking about a meta attack. Which means you have Attackers to fake it out bomb. and waste the C4 and gas canisters. But you're not going to have time at the pace you're going at right now. So, yeah, Payne need to pick it up. Oh, Astro finally spots the drone, but that was one that Payne had saved previously at the bottom of the main stairs looking towards the garage entrance as a possible flank grenade or a possible flank drone to see. As a flash grenade will go off as an exothermic charge opens things up, and here we go. A minute to go, and the symphony will begin, as I said, rhythmic. Waiting with Yuna prone to try and get the C4 last time around. FaZe were successful on both of their C4 attempts that were hucked out from that half wall. It's going to be another flashbang that's going to go off just next to Yuna, and a frag grenade goes in. He's just going to stay completely prone, waiting to see. Spawns might have another grenade, and this could be the downfall of Yuna. Moringa not too far off, and depending on where, if Spawns does indeed have a second frag grenade, this could be very difficult. Yuna completely blinded as a toxic canister will choke off the advance of somebody dropping. And there goes another Ooh. frag grenade, and it's going to hit Yuna, but he'll remain unscathed. Just a tiny bit of HP, as C4 will miss. So, Revolt's doing cover fire. This will look much worse for FaZe, as they're also going to lose Astro to the Mav. But Mav, it is C4. A great mark, and that'll be the defender going down. GCR will be tagged in, and 
Cameraman watching the bottom of main stairs. He's gonna try to get somebody else there. Mav takes out Revolts, falls to spawns, and Diffuser goes down quite successfully. And the best round for Payne so far continue to play itself out. 2v2 with Yuna and very low HP means that FaZe at a disadvantage, also having to work against that timer. This cameraman will walk up and head towards open area, but as a maestro, he'll be making an awful lot of noise. It's gonna see if there's any coverage on the hatch above. It's gonna be spawns there. Who's gonna win the fight as cameraman looks the wrong way? And Yuna, almost shooting at the falling body, but he is just one tiny whisper away from the grave and he's gonna circle underneath the hatch. Looking for the buck, in vain, the pistol out from the buck. Yuna will get the kill, but he's running out of time. GCR in perfect position. This is gonna be a lockout phase, losing the round. Yuna understanding that the time has run out. And finally, the stalemate that we had seen. The defense here will be broken with Pain Gaming winning their very first attacking round victory. It comes at a pretty good time. They'll need to mount a comeback. But they do have the benefit of going to defense next. Still 4-1 for phase. So that attack, uh, honestly, I'm really impressed by Pain. Uh, because it's true, they were playing that really slow in the lead up to the uh, actual start of the juggle downstairs, um, trying to waste the utility. They had very little time. They started with a minute, I believe it was, when they actually finally thermited that wall. Impressive that they managed to waste one of the C4s. They lost somebody to the other C4, but they didn't let that get them down. The biggest play there was Revolts dropping through the hatch, using his smokes to cover that drop, and then also disabling the smoke himself. Um, and then from there, he also disrupted the rest of the defenders and delayed their push in Attackers to deny the defuse plan. Uh, as well, we had the push down the main stairs, the Maverick. Didn't really accomplish much, but it was a you know, good distraction, if anything. So well coordinated from pain, and the timing there had to be perfect. And it was. It was Bob perfect from pain. All of the cogs did their part, and thus the machine ran. The attack was successful, despite FaZe trying to claw their way back into that. The play from Spawns of, uh, as the buck to get those two grenades down and somehow not take out Yuna, but reduce him to such a tiny yeah, bit of HP. Left. Yeah. Very, very frustrating, I would imagine, from pain side of things. And almost Five assuredly could have made that a much smoother transition towards the plant for Payne. But it's Attackers a good thing that they had the revolts there as the coverage Attackers for the Glass who took out Yuna and deprived that one C4 that was on the team. Now mind you, the C4 did get tossed out from Yuna. It just didn't hit anything, and then he was finished off shortly thereafter. Mav came in, his C4 did hit. But at that point, I think Payne understood that they had broken the hold over on the vault side and could clamp down. Astro was caught as he was trying to get back to sight. And then it's very difficult if you don't have a numbers advantage for the defense because you have to rotate all the way up to where Yuna is right now inside of admin office because you know, almost always know there's going to be somebody playing that hatch, which is where Spawns was after the fact. In fact, the Buck had never actually lost his place on that first floor, which has ma made it so especially difficult for FaZe in the post plan. So now transitioning to Teller's Archives as the next site here. Also, I believe, going to be the final site for phases. We will transition to the second half after this. FK going to start things off with a kill onto Cameraman upstairs. Really, seemingly an easy one. No challenge at all. FK took damage, but it was from a lesion trap. Critical of the speed at which Payne was being able to enter and find the frags that they needed to. They've done a much better job at a minute and 15 seconds getting in, taking control of CEO to a certain extent and being very close to being able to exert that pressure onto the floor or on what would actually be the roof over top of the heads of FaZe Clan down below. All the while, the pulse of Mav is still going to be able to call all of this for his team and that is going to give them a little bit of breathing room as Payne continues to assemble over on the CEO side of things upstairs. Talked about how Payne needed to be more efficient with their attacks, and they have apparently heard us, made that adjustment. Good job to them. Clearing out what they know they need. That top floor control is going to be so instrumental when they actually go for the push into the site. Goobine will get triggered, and that's going to be Yuna there to clean up onto spawns, as we're going to see a very similar position from both Moringa and Yuna playing inside of sight, using that soft destruction above to try and hold off Pain Gaming. Now, last time around, FaZe were able to win it because of the scramble over towards the main lobby. Revolts has made his way into the main lobby much faster. And unbeknownst to him, there's a lesion that is prone over by the teller's desk, just waiting to jump up. 
I don't know if Aster's got the calls or the information. Yeah, this is dangerous for both players. I mean, it really just comes down to who's looking where when both of them are peeking each other. And it could go either way. Yuna's gonna get FK1 though, and here's a lot of players attacking this main lobby. And you can see the Ash gets down, but will be picked up. Revolts though, the only one actually currently in play for his team as Moringa takes down his teammate. Moringa's in the main lobby, yet again in a really awkward situation and hard for the attackers to deal with, but Revolts will finally deal with him. But look at the time. There's no potential for a plant. And all this Mira needs to do is stay alive. FaZe takes the round. Five to one, first half definitely goes to phase, and we will transition. If you're gonna be coming in with pain holding that diffuser, you need to make sure that the person there has a proper escort because the target prioritization of Astro behind the desk at Tellers was good. I mean, he popped up, he was able to take the push that was coming in towards the Tellers door with the metal detectors on it. It's impossible to know who has that diffuser. So because of this, Astro got lucky, but, but by doing so, Drop the diffuser. Moringa, not too far off, sees the diffuser down and is able to call it. Now, Astro immediately gets refragged, but Moringa just needs to sit and waste time, and that's all he did. You saw the hesitation from the glass having to go in and deliberately take out Moringa because the diffuser needed to be fetched. Attackers need to all that left was Yuna inside of the B site, can. very far off, and unable to be fragged out in time, despite the fact that Payne had a big advantage in terms of numbers in a 2v1. Attackers the clock the was their bigger bomb. adversary than Yuna. And it now puts us in a position where, very similar to what we saw from the Ints and Nip game, FaZe are very firmly in the driver's seat. If the theory holds that it's just simply the defense winning because the defense should be winning, then we're gonna see a comeback here from Payne over the next six rounds. What's really telling is if FaZe is able to take this round or lose this round and then immediately take the next, very similar to what we saw from Nip, that could spell a lot of trouble for Payne. But Theory crafting didn't get us very far in that second matchup because Intel almost brought it all the way back, so I'll reserve my speculation for a uh, post game where I can then turn around and say, yeah, I thought that all along. I was right to be there. Almost is the key word there, though. We for did see. Well, no, for, yeah, for instant, uh, for uh, Nip. We did see Nip actually win it out in the end, so that I think is the most important thing. Even if it takes you the whole length of the, of the match, I mean, and, and it has for. <laughs> All but one of the matches so far in LATAM. Uh, it's still a win. I really like the uh, Blackbeard pick here, actually, from FaZe. We don't really see him very often, but I feel as though he's going to be one of those operators that's going to help you punch through this bog that most teams seem to be having on attack. Uh, as You just win one or two fights. That's what Blackbeard does. He just is going to win one or two fights, and you will give your team a huge advantage, especially on a map like Bank, especially even more so attacking the basement. Nobody on Pain Gaming playing those server stairs, which is not uncommon, but I mean at the same time, it's not, uh, not, not uncommon, so to speak. <laughs> Different teams play it completely differently, but Cameraman is sitting in the middle of this hatch. It looks like he's just gonna drop the moment it goes. Oh no, there he goes, he's gonna get off. I was gonna say, is he just gonna hot drop right in? And this has gotta be some of the most efficient blowtorching that I've actually seen yeah. from anybody. That was quite fast that we saw Cameraman be able to take that hatch inside of admin office. We mentioned that this push takes quite a while. You called it juggling. I think that's a perfect way to describe it, is that you have to basically wait out all of the smoke canisters, all the toxic canisters, and then the C4s as well. And FaZe is about wow. on tempo here. Revolts will completely miss that C4, and it will accomplish next to nothing. That was a beautiful fake out there from the Thermite. I have to say, he, ju he juggled that perfectly. Two seconds on the defuse, and then right off, dodges a C4. What changes are we going to see here in the final minute as you've still got spawns quarterbacking this push inside, or quarterbacking this defense inside of gold, being able to give all of the information to Payne, which will greatly aid them, but you know exactly how FaZe is going to try to play this out. The big difference maker for me is going to be what happens with Mavs C4, or what happens with Mavs Blackbeard. The C4 will connect onto Moringa, who gets downed and will need to be picked up, but still the FaZe plan, no casualties. This time around, it'll be Yuna in there with Moringa actually on just one HP. This Mav will cut off FK1, and there you go, the Blackbeard doing everything he needs to do. Astro finding a kill of his own, GCR getting one for Pain will be both teams getting the kill, but Diffuser, most importantly, goes down for FaZe. So revolts under that hatch up towards Admin, and this is gonna be the issue. 
We're going to need somebody from Payne who are already at a numbers disadvantage to come up and patrol the hatch, but they've got somebody up there. GCR is up top and admin watching that hatch, but he gets felled by Moringa, who inside of open area with one HP is basically a ghost of himself. Trying to keep FaZe from losing this matchup. Revolts goes down, but Yuna, easy on that trigger finger. He guns him down, leaving just spawns inside of open area with a quarter of that defuse left. He's running out of time. Seven seconds may not seem like a lot, but it's going to be exhaust, and that'll be FaZe taking the round as there's no time for Pain to get back. Even though Spawns is able to get Astro, it's in vain. As I said, no chance for Pain to be able to come back here, and FaZe will move on to match point. The star of that round to me was clearly Moringa. Now, he managed to get some kills too, but the biggest thing that he did was juggle the C4 and the gas canisters perfectly. Two C4s. Two C4s and three gas canisters and zero kills for Pain from all of those. All they did was delay for about a minute, maybe less, honestly. So, and, and that, that was all Moringa. He survived all of that. So really props to him for uh, juggling it perfectly and then managing to allow Yuna to plant the diff diffuser after he saw Moringa get put down a pretty low HP through that process. So he's not gonna commit to that uh, plant any longer. But all the same, he did his job. Really well done. Attackers need FaZe to and playing the meta perfectly. I, again, I think it really comes down to this. If we're looking at, if we're talking about pure meta and strategy on that level, Pain Gaming are struggling to compare right now to FaZe. And that's the simplest way I can put it. It was the same thing when FaZe was on defense. It's repeating itself now on attack. There's nothing else to say. And I think, and this is gonna, it sounds weird, but I think Pain in this situation, in the long run, I think they should they should grind the meta. But in this situation, I think it might benefit them to try and break away from the norm. Ten seconds do left. something a little bit different. Try to catch phase off guard. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But right now, whatever they're doing Five is not working. Left. The Monty ban will be interesting from Pain's perspective. I think it's a great ban for Pain. Yeah. Attackers I think it's going to give them a pretty good fighting chance Attackers to be able to stop to phase. But you really only have to worry about it straight out of the gate when you're attacking CCTV downstairs. Now, keep in mind, the way that FaZe plays this Monty is pretty simple. They take the panel that faces the east server rack. So it's the panel that you don't actually see a lot of teams take. So when most teams open up the server wall in towards CCTV, they're gonna take the one that faces the stairs. FaZe will take out the one that faces the server rack. They'll put Monty in front to hold an angle and basically stare at where the mirror window is gonna be and then have the fake out happen behind them. That's going to be the big thing here for FaZe. But they don't have the Monty at their disposal, so it was good to see FaZe adapt differently and take out the standard panel and then bait it out, as you said. Big credits to Moringa there, and he did it without Yuna on the Monty. So for FaZe in their second crack at CCTV downstairs, I'd imagine that Payne were probably looking to see the way that FaZe was going to play it out without the Monty there, usually to be able to stop the... Uh, the defenders from being able to take out Moringa in the post play or in the in the plant phase the way he usually does. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, take notes. I can't get over how fast he does this. How to open a drop down as Maverick? Uh, less That's than his so finish. fast. Cameraman does it right, man. Uh, and this is the sort of thing that that you see prevalent in like the highest highest level. Not just not just pro league, but the highest level of pro league. And players, they're given a role. They practice every facet of that role. It's not just, oh, hey, yeah, play Maverick, open, drop down. No, it's play Maverick, open, drop down, and know how to do it the right way. Yeah. One exothermic charge used on that south panel. So there's two panels that you can see. There's the one on the south, and there's the one on the east. The eastern panel is the one that faces the server rack, and the southern panel is the one that faces the stairs towards CCTV. This is actually a dangerous place for Astro. Your feet hang over that yeah. ledge. You can actually get shot, and I think Pretty he's, easily. Aware, he's aware of that, which is why you see him now trying something different. <laughs> That's a big yikes and a half, as the mayor of Oopsville is currently re-elected, and that's going to be Yuna with the grenade going off. Congratulations on your victory, Yuna, but uh, not exactly the, the type of thing that you want to win. Nor the timer place. And it's going to be a big problem as well for Yuna, because those grenades up in the admin office prove to be so beneficial to try and push the Mira that's going to be playing inside of Red. It's going to be where Cameraman is currently looking, as he's opened up one hatch all the way and created death holes in the other. It also means that Moringa's got to have the, the same coverage, coverage that you saw from Yuna. It was actually Yuna who was getting the diffuser down in the previous round and what ultimately won it for FaZe. 
So, so far we've seen Pain be really good at holding on to their utility. And because of that, there's not enough time for FaZe to get this plant with the utility in play. The C4 will land and GCR upstairs will get a kill of his own. You're gonna see Mav start to go downstairs to try and support his last team out of Astro, potentially get that defuse plant. But no, Astro's coming in from Garage. There's no time left. And the defenders will win on just that time alone. Pain Gaming holding out to the very end. And they will get their first round in this second half, totaling two throughout the match. Now, well done to Payne, I have to say, holding on to the utility. It's a big uh, mistake there from FaZe being able, or not being able to uh, waste the C4 this time around. Uh, it also seemed like FaZe was a little bit less lethal in the actual prodding that they were doing of Payne. I mean, it started, I think, with Yuna nading himself. That was, that was where it all started to go wrong for FaZe. They needed those nades to land in Red Hall disrupt the C4 or maybe get the smoke or just somehow disable that red hall allowing for the, the the fuse plant just inside of server wall but it didn't happen in fact Yuna killed himself he didn't just miss the nade so, yeah that kind of thing really really sucks attackers. it really sucks yeah. for, your, for your push <laughs> no but no but that was the that <laughs> was, the, was the, like you're trying to do that and it's just hang like, on. man that's a bummer <laughs> that was the tool that fades were clearly relying on to right. go in for the plant and it wasn't there. Well, I mean, you get the coverage. You see the way that a lot of teams play it. When mm -hmm. you have that Mira in that position, unless you directly reinforce the wall right next to them, there's like a there's a bank cart that's turned sideways that you yeah. can bounce the frag grenade off right and, on top of and right on top of the Mira on the other side. And if you don't time that correctly, or you miss your throw, you're essentially doomed. Also, you can possibly toss a grenade down through the hatch that we saw Cameraman looking through that he hadn't fully taken care of, once again, all the way down into red, if you bounce it correctly. Now, it's a bit more of a stretch to do it that way. And also, the hatch wasn't fully open. And that could have been the issue that happened there. But, yeah. all things considered, Payne were able to respond to what FaZe threw at them, and after FaZe essentially gave themselves a mortal blow, <laughs> Payne were able to still be patient, and it would be very easy for a lot of teams to get very aggressive and try to outfrag the opponent, but it was a perfect hold from pain, given the circumstances that FaZe found themselves in. Now we're going to go back to uh, CEO, but this time it's going to be pain on defense on CEO, whereas before we'd seen FaZe go to it on two separate occasions. Both times the defense were successful. It and Tellers are the two sites where the defense is perfect so far. If you're paying, you're hoping that's going to play out the same. On phase, you're bringing almost the exact same utility, but you're not bringing a Maverick this time. You're bringing a Zofia because that's what you need and an Ash from Cameraman there as well. They don't really need Maverick um, on any site but the bottom floor. The reason you bring him is as a substitute for Habana because Habana's not going to exist on bank. It's rare that she goes unbanned on this map. Uh, so yeah, I mean, if you know you're not going to be attacking the bottom floor, you may as well not bring him. You can, though. Uh, he's still very useful. Like, he can open some murder holes here on these walls right in front of Yuna. But you'd rather have it thermited. And it makes it more difficult to thermite when you open up little holes everywhere. So, speaking of thermiting, Moringa is going to open up that uh, south wall and uh, have complete access to CEO. Surprised there wasn't a potential impact trick there from Gabrielos. It looked like he might have been able to get it with the tiny bit of the wall above it, but the Thermite charge was down far enough. I think the impact still probably would have gotten it. That's where you see a lot of lesions, and some teams have run smokes there with the impact grenades as well. So one of the CEO walls being opened up by FaZe will allow them much easier access in. The big worry for FaZe right now is that Mav is going to have to pin down roughly half of this site as the Blackbeard on Repel, and he's very vulnerable to a run out from main lobby, and there you go. Sprinting out, Gabrielos is gonna jump out of the windows and head for the hills as he's gonna be possibly refragged by FaZe, but he doesn't know where anybody is, and he's gonna be exposed this entire time. 40 seconds left means that we're gonna see the castle wasting quite a bit of time. It's gonna give his team quite a bit of breathing room. Finally taken out by Astro, but that's a costly maneuver from FaZe. That means that Zofia's gonna to need to get back, and she doesn't have the advantage of a lot of speed at her disposal. Moringa, a great shot. There are two separate walls to take out Revolts. GCR 
win to see what he can accomplish. He'll peek up and get Astro on top of the spiral stairs. Looks for a second, and GCR snapping on the cameraman. Since 2v2, Moringo trying to walk into sight. Yuna is there, very low HP. The dock of GCR will need to continue as he will have to pick up a 4K. He sees Yuna, will have to pick up Moringa as Moringa very vulnerable. He will fall off, and GCR a monstrous clutch and an incredible performance in the post plant. He'll get every single person that he finds. A victory hop out the window as Payne will take their second round in a row. The defense still doing quite well, as we'd imagine in phase, still searching for that win to put this match away. What a 4K from TCR. The clutch to boot, as you said, really well done. Uh, and another one of those rounds where on match point, the team who should win the round, should end the match, just doesn't. So the same thing we saw a couple times in the Insnip match on this very same map. And uh, that was because of drunks managing to clutch out quite a lot of rounds for ins. But here we go. GCR now the hero for pain. Props to him. And uh, keeping it alive for at least one more. Teller's office, the next one for pain to defend. There's not a whole lot to say about that last round. Um, we should have seen, uh, uh, clearly it was a phase round. Uh, we probably should have seen from FaZe a, a flank watch for the run out on the North Windows. Those North Window runouts are really predictable they these days. Um, I think they became meta like early last season and since then have been, yeah, the sort of thing that you need to keep an eye out for. Uh, the problem with that is it's hard to commit somebody to watching your run out there. There's so much distance to cover. If you're going to watch that run out, you have to run all the way back inside and it takes a lot of time. That's why you usually see the attackers just leave somebody out there on the repel and try to do as much damage as he can before he is taken down. Either way, the attack coming from the skylight was very substantially successful. I mean, I, I'm as surprised as you that we didn't see any attempt at impact tricking. I feel like that is a, a tool that Payne could at least try to use. Could give them uh, pretty substantial power. The rest of the push from FaZe was beautifully executed. Uh, Playing all the angles properly, so especially Moringa, that long angle kill he got from the top of Skylight. You would have expected that to be enough, especially considering every single time A's lost a player, there was a refrag. Except for the case of GCR. We have to get four kills. And that was really all it is, is GCR racking up those kills from the perfect clutch position all the way by reception. And there was, as you said, there was nobody there for a refrag. You know, like, it, GCR was in a position where everybody was kind of running and they didn't really anticipate the dock to be there because of the fact that it was so late. FaZe didn't have the chance to really get fully coordinated. They got caught as they were trying to rush towards the site. Great drone from Astro is now he's just going to rattle away through one of those lobby windows, trying to do some soft destruction above, as FaZe Clan's priority is going to be to take CEO. We are attacking Tellers and Archives from FaZe's perspective, or defending Tellers Archives from Pain Gaming's perspective. And because of this, you're going to have to try to take care of CEO. We saw the reverse happen for FaZe Clan, where they would sit underneath and try to Hard dare Pain to enter into CEO and have holes created. That would cause some headaches for Pain Gaming on the attack. We'll see if the reverse or the inverse is true now. GCR, the hero of the previous round, is just going to sit upstairs with Gabrielos hopefully feeding him information as the pulse below. That cardiac sensor being pivotal. Scanning. As phase takes 90 seconds and still quite heavily droning things out as they know that there's two bodies upstairs at minimum. Just looking to pinch those players, but... Those two bodies you talked about are being exceptionally passive, and that's exactly what they need to do right now. Unlikely that uh, either of them is going to win many of these fights that are being presented with. So playing slow, playing passive, the right call, especially as we come down to the very last minute of this round. DCR and FK doing a great job at delaying. And FaZe now are the ones who need to work on their time management. Not enough information being gathered here. You can see the drones finally coming in, but they're taking too much time. Revolts will take down Astro. Mav able to refrag though. FK1 eliminated and the start to top four control here for FaZe. But again, 34 seconds left. That's not enough time to work with this top four control. So you've established it, but it's not got any value any longer because there's no time to open up the floor and start applying pressure to the anchors. And what time you do have, you can open the floor, 
but eventually you, the defenders know they can move back into those positions that you are rendering useless because you have to push the site. Moringa gonna take down GCR and revolts a beautiful C4 through the wall, but he exposes himself to Moringa in the main lobby. Again though, time is of at the essence here. It's just one defender that spawns, but he's in a great position, and it's all Moringa in a one versus one as Cameraman is down, but oh no, a beautiful plant for Moringa! It spawns, plays it so poorly, not realizing that it's a one versus one on the zero, zero, zero. He could have won that round, but he was just too cautious. Good job to FaZe, finally locking it out, thanks to Moringa and his excellent play there in the dying seconds of that round. Overall, a very impressive matchup from Moringa, all things considered. Not always somebody who's gonna be stealing the show, but coming in in very pivotal moments, not just yeah. contributions on the scoreboard, out fragging some of the typical entries of FaZe, but also just really coming in in the moments where they needed him the most. So 